All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name's Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're gonna be answering your questions, answering your comments, helping people out. As I continue to like bang the same drum over and over, we are coming into the last few weeks of really, truly good ski deals. So I'm gonna see if I can help out as many of you as I can before winter starts. My home mountain opens in about 10 days, I think, something like that. Uh, so that's when I'm gonna start my boot content and boot fitting content and then once we've got a couple weeks of good snow That's when I'll roll into the ski content and start doing ski reviews But before then I've still got a couple weeks left where I can talk about ski deals. I'll probably Take a break from that or at least do it less once I get into like December and January But for right now there's good deals and I want to help you guys so without further ado Let's answer your questions the first comment comes from Yellow Mango 117 they say thank you so much for the video I ended up picking up a pair of QST 98 in a 183 because of you this will be my first pair of skis that I have a freedom to choose a mounting point and was wondering if you recommend anything other than the factory recommended mounting point six foot and around 165 170 if that plays a factor I believe I ski my 176 Maverick 86 C at the factory recommended and ideally see myself using the QST in trees and bowls for when I travel out west will primarily stick to the Maverick on the East Coast. I love moguls, so I'll probably be encountering those as well. I appreciate any insight, and thanks again for the great video. Uh, that is a personal preference, and I have not been able to test the QST 98s at different mounting points. I've only been able to demo those from the shop. I do believe Solomon's supposed to be sending some of their stance skis, so I will be able to test those more thoroughly. But as far as the QST goes, I've only demoed them on factory recommended. Like, when I demo them, and usually I go to a local shop where they have half price demo days <laughs> on Wednesdays. So like usually I'll, anyway. I've only done the QSTs of Factor Recommended. When I lined up my QST 106 with the Head Core 105 and the Peak 104, you can see the QST was lined up with the Head Core and actually lined up with the best spot for the Peak 104. So I think they, they've got a good understanding. It's a very fun, comfortable ski. I don't think there's any issues with the Factory Recommended mounting point and uh, I wouldn't mess with that. I think that's a really good mounting point they've got set now. The wind's blowing like crazy, so I'm gonna shoot this as quick as I can. CarterFan80 says, just curious if you've reached out to Kessel about trying some skis. I have, I've reached out to just about every brand I can think of on Instagram, on their email, LinkedIn, you name it. The one thing I found very shocking from doing this outreach, and I grew that Instagram account so it has like a good following, it's like gotten so many views, it's verified now, there's a few reels with like millions of views. So, you know, like thinking this would entice companies to collaborate. And the most surprising thing, honestly, has been most brands don't check their message requests. For a lot of these brands, they are just completely asleep at the wheel. I cannot believe that they don't, not even, it's not even like an ego thing like, oh, they didn't reply to me. They don't reply to a verified account in their requests. Like, I get requests all the time. I try to check it a few times a day. I know it's like not right in your inbox, but somebody should be filing through that. Like there's important stuff there. Like honestly, maybe one day I'll make a list of ski brands where they need to like tap their marketing manager person on the, <laughs> like, hey, who's checking our Instagram requests? <laughs> I know they get a lot, right? I, I'm sure there's like a ton of people out there asking for free stuff, but I'm, I'm looking for a product to review. I, I don't care about free stuff. I don't need more free stuff. I just want to like have a wide variety of skis so I can be really accurate for you guys. Uh, so it's wild to me they don't check that. It's like, and then you see some of their marketing stuff and it's like, I'm offering to shoot this stuff for you for free. Yeah, it's not gonna be exactly what you want. It'll be my honest opinion, but you're still getting like a showcase of your skis for essentially the cost of whatever the skis are. I don't know. It, it seems like easy math for me. When I worked in shipping fulfillment, I worked with clients who were e-commerce sellers. They couldn't buy that kind of thing. And uh, it's really, really, crazy to me that they're not more open to it but oh oh well that's fine <laughs> but no uh kesley has not replied i've sent them several things i'll send them another email just for you carter i appreciate you asking all right adam miller 5088 says i don't know if you read these comments well here we are <laughs> i do but I've been watching for a while now. The content's good and you are improving. Just FYI, when I first started watching, you had some negative reviews about other reviewers and that was a bit of a turnoff. The content you provide about the skis is great and it seems like you are going 100% in that direction recently. I am fine with a negative review of a ski, but making fun of how other people ski or review skis 
probably isn't your forte. I'm rooting for you, man. I just wanted to throw out the feedback and I'm happy for you that the channel's taking off. That's a great comment and it is something I've been thinking about a lot lately because I haven't been reacting to other people's reviews. I do think that I will still, in some capacity, look at other people's reviews just for the sake that it's nice to look at like my ski reviews not in an entire vacuum. You know what I mean? Like it's nice to know and compare notes with other people, but I think I'm gonna keep doing it in more of a positive way. The other, there's a couple things that have happened since then. One, I'm starting to realize that a lot of these other channels that I'm critiquing, they're really not my colleagues, you know? There is no other independent reviewer out there making videos like this. There are a couple other good reviewers in kind of different channels, and like there's other great channels I love, a lot of good vloggers, people like that. But as far as other reviewers go, every single other one is either a ski shop or a sponsored skier. Like all of them. And I'm not even seeing that like as a dig. Like Ski Essentials sell skis. Ski Monster sells skis. Out of Collective, I believe they're tied to a ski shop. And so to like hold them to the same standard I hold myself as an independent reviewer is unfair and also not a good use of time. And like there are things that all of those channels do really well. And, and a lot of things I like about them. And so sometimes what happens is I'll do a critique and then all that remains is my critique because I didn't make a video about their good content. So I don't know, maybe it's just, there was also that video Lucas did where he was shouting at other creators. Maybe it warmed my cold Grinch heart. But at the end of the day, I just kind of decided it's not a great use of time. You know, there is just an endless well of bad ski content out there. And if I try to spend all day chasing all of it, I'll spin my head in circles. So I will try to focus on stuff that I think is like really wrong or misrepresented, um, but in maybe more of a thoughtful way in less of like a, you know, duck hunting sort of way, if that analogy makes any sense <laughs> to anyone. I'm not even sure if it makes sense to me. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. There's so much bad ski content out there. You know, not, not from any of the channels I mentioned before. You know, like from the previous stuff from Curated and whatnot, that it was fun to do, but it was a very one-sided coin. I couldn't go in afterwards and be like, well, actually the videos are improving and there's nuance. It's like, once you make the video, it's kind of like a stamp there. And people go back and go like, well, what about this? And I'm like, I agree with you, but it's been a year and like, that's not really how I feel anymore. So I think when it's stuff being like peer reviewed cross examinations of skis, I may do a couple of those with the Ski Essentials videos because like I like the reviews and I like comparing notes with them, especially stuff that's kind of specialized or niche like the ski boot liner, stuff like that. I would be open to doing it in the future, but I want to do it in more of a productive way rather than just chasing my shadow at anything that looks bad. And like I said too, like I can hold myself to a standard of what I think is a good review, but I can't spend all day policing everybody when I think that they're not making very good reviews. I can call it out and be like, that's baloney, but I don't know. I think it's a better use of my time now that I have more access to skis to focus on that. And now that I like have an audience that has real questions and wants help finding skis, in my opinion, I just, I, I've just changed how I prioritize my time. Like I care about you guys and I wanna help you out. So um, I appreciate your feedback. There's a couple content creators where I would like to make some videos about them, but I want it to be like critical and merit-based rather than like you said, making fun of their skiing or something like that. Uh, curated was kind of a special example and then I think I took that format and extended it to other creators where that wasn't necessarily a fair thing to do. I still stand by the curated stuff. I mean, the curated stuff was total baloney and they like they call their people curated experts. Okay, well like you're just kind of misleading customers at that point. But beyond that, I'm going to uh, try to do things that I think are good for me, good for my viewers, and good for the ski community as a whole. All right, next comment comes from Adam Barnes. 5915. Wow, I jumped on your Evo link and bought the Bent 110s for 375 last week. Glad I did. I thought they were going to run out of my size, but never thought the price would bounce back up. Weird. Yeah, I've talked to some kind of people inside of the industry, and what they've said is there could have been an issue with the pricing from Amher Sports. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but I'm glad that my video helped you get a good deal. I'm sure the price will like continue to go down, but 
oh, actually, if you feel like you missed out on that Bent 110 deal, I found them again for almost the same price at Utah Skis. I believe they're 389, and Utah Skis is like very supportive of the channel, so I will put a link down to that. You can still get a good deal. If you're, if you're feeling like, oh no, I missed out, have no fear. And actually, Utah Skis has some better sizing options for people my size, so I'll put a link here below. I put it in the description of yesterday's deal video, but I'll, I'll put it in this video as well. If you're looking, like, 389 for bent 110s. I think that's pretty good. All right, Exothermal Sprocket says, Solomon Stance 90 would be nice to have on the docket this season. So the Solomon Stance is on the docket. I forget what they're sending, if it's the 90 or the 96, I can't remember. But something along, along those lines are supposed to be on the way. Like I said, I'll see it when it gets here. They said it's coming sometime in November. You never know. You know what I mean? DPS Ski said that they were gonna send me stuff and then now I can't get an email back from anyone. Although they had something in the news where one of the head people is stepping away and they're hiring new people, so they may just be scattered and I don't know. I always assume the best of people until proven otherwise. So yeah, but Solomon stances are on the docket. They just have to like physically get to my location and then I put them in the queue. I don't like let people hold spots in queues or anything like that. I, it's like very on the up and up. Nobody pays me. You send the skis, as soon as the skis arrive, they go in the queue and that's what I review. So, um, ooh, that kind of rhymed. The only exception is powder skis. If somebody sends me a powder ski in July, like Renown did, okay, well, <laughs> like, it's gonna be the first powder ski that I put on snow, but I'm, you know, like, I, I'm not gonna hold off on doing everything beginning of the season. If that makes any sense, there's a couple different cues. Okay, the capable skier W1L says, I hope you show a bit of heating and molding process you use for the Intuition and ZipFit liners. This might be something I would do in the future. Yeah, that's my plan. It might look a little janky. I was looking up how to do it and you can like boil them or put them in the oven. I'm gonna see what I can do that will get me in the least amount of trouble with my partner. Um, I'm not sure my wife would love having boots in the oven, although I guess they're new. I don't know, <laughs> we'll see. I'm gonna try to do it in the most sanitary way possible. But yeah, I am planning on doing everything by the book. I even reached out to ZipFit and they were like, okay, cool, even though they're used, we'll show you how to like heat mold them or whatever. And they sent me a couple videos. So I wanna do everything by the book and give them the best odds for success. And just for the sake of accuracy to the review. I don't make money from ZipFit, I'm not sponsored in any way, but I am curious and I wanna be thorough for you guys. So that, that's the plan. Uh, how well I can document it, we'll see, but I will try my best to document it as thoroughly as I can. I It's hard to like hold a camera and put stuff in the oven, so it might look a little janky, but you know, I don't know, I'll do my best. All right, StanRay22 says, new skier here. I've only skied on rentals three to four times last year looking to buy my first set of skis. I'm between the Maverick 88 Ti, Headcore 93, or Ripstick 88. Most of the time we'll be at resorts in Michigan. What do you think will be my best option? Boy, it's hard, that, that's a hard question. Um, three to four times, they do make beginner skis, that might be a good option. Just honestly, because the amount of technology that's going into like the flex of the ski, it might be a little while before you really see the benefits of any of those skis. My always like go-to safe bet is kind of the Headcore 93 just because it's very versatile, but for Michigan and being a beginner, I would probably go with the Ripstick 88. Uh, it's, I maybe just get a beginner ski or I would keep renting until you feel really comfortable and then you can try out different things like the demo shops typically will have Rosignol, Elan, whatever. Um, but if I had to pick between what you put in front of me, I would pick the Ripstick 88. It's got that asymmetrical shape, at least the Ripstick 96 Blacks that I skied. Assuming that these are similarly built, the Ripstick 88 will have that asymmetrical shape. And what's nice about that is it's kind of setting you up to start the turn for you. You don't have to do a lot to get your turn initiated. It's pretty much like you breathe in the ski's direction and it wants to start the turn. So I think that as you become an intermediate skier, that'll be really appealing, but I don't know. Be wary. Try to demo some skis if you can, um, because we're, I, it's hard for me to gauge. I don't know what your skiing looks like. I don't know what, exactly what hill you're at. I'm not even from the Midwest, or have I ever skied there? So take it with a huge grain of salt. But out of the list, I would pick Ripstick 88, just based on the little information I have. 
All right, the last comment comes from Sam Lens 8300 I love this video, unbiased. I will say, um, that's a very nice comment, thank you. I am biased, everybody's biased. That's kind of how biases work. <laughs> like, everybody has a bias. I love carving, I'm biased towards skis that carve well. Uh, Zach is a lighter skier, he's biased in that way. Everybody has biases. I think what is important for anybody who's reviewing products is just to acknowledge them up front and tell people when there might be a conflict there. Like, I will tell people, hey, I love my Roosh mittens, but <laughs> I also paid $27 for them. So for me, this value seems incredible, but that's gonna change how I think about things. Same for whenever like a company sends me a product, I try to be really mindful of the price. Like, I had those sunglasses, and Zach and I were reviewing them. Zach's like, these are so nice, I love these, I'm gonna use them all the time. And he does love them, they're great sunglasses. But I was like, okay, you love them, but would you love them if you paid full price? I think it was like $150. And I try to ask myself that. And then I look, okay, how much did I spend for my own sunglasses? They're typically 200. Okay, like, if I save 50 bucks and got this much performance, where is that at? Everybody has biases. Uh, I grew up on the East Coast, so I'm used to like ice, but then now I live in the West, so I like a nice soft, snow ski there are all of these biases but i think once you can recognize them and factor that in you can at least give people a really clear picture of how your opinion is affected and try to clear that up as much as possible at least that's what i try to do that's why that motto from curated always really bothered me uh oh well nobody paid us so we're not biased it's like I, i've said this right a hundred times i'm sure you the audience is sick of hearing it but everybody has biases that's just as humans, we all have biases from our environment, from our history, from our past. You know, like I've had skis as a kid that I loved and then I had to get over that and be like, well, I don't like the current gen skis that they make. And you know, you just work through it as best you can. But I appreciate, I know you were just trying to give me a nice compliment. Like that's the other thing, being from Vermont in Idaho, everyone's so nice here. And it's like, <laughs> I just have a hard time taking compliments. <laughs> Sometimes I just need to take them and move on rather than going on the spiel. But, Anyway, just something I've thought about a lot and I want to talk about. So anyway, that's the end of the video. If you like this kind of content, please consider liking and subscribing. If you have a question you really want answered, become a member, send me an email with your membership status, and I'd love to answer it. I know you guys take time out of your day to watch these videos, so thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Um, I will have links down below to all the skis I talked about. Also, if you missed some of the ski deal videos, I'll just copy and paste those deals below so you can check them out, if, you, if or just check out the video. It's up to you. But either way, no matter what, just thanks for being here. It means a ton to me. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.